Hello students, I am Dr. Prerna Bhaseen, Consultant Anthropologist and Director Inspire Analytics. We are going to talk about fieldwork tradition in anthropology as a module today. It is from the paper Research Methods and Fieldwork. The learning outcomes for the present day would be to understand about the fieldwork in anthropology along with its history. We are also going to talk about significance and uniqueness of fieldwork in anthropology. We will then move on to understand different methods in which fieldwork is conducted in anthropology. There will also be concerns and issues that will be discussed as we go along. We will also talk about the ethics and the changing scenarios in fieldwork studies. Let's start about understanding why anthropology and fieldwork go hand in hand. Anthropology is popularly known as the field science. This is because in its study of humans, both socially and biologically, it depends on authenticating its data from real world experiences and knowledge. This reality is captured not only by the suppositions and theories, but by gathering the first hand knowledge on it. This is where fieldwork as an approach of the study comes in. The module today will discuss the relevance of fieldwork and its tradition in anthropology. And we will put forward how as a methodology since its inception and evolution has played an important role in the anthropological study. The figure one will depict the field tradition in anthropology. Let's understand what exactly is this fieldwork. Fieldwork is the most central inquiry of anthropology. It can be said to have formed the foundation of the discipline. The famous anthropologist Margaret Mead once noted and said that we have no way to make an anthropologist accept by sending them into the field. This contact with living material is our distinguishing mark. Traditionally, the word field indicates the area where the members of the group to be researched by the investigator live in. However, today the field may also be the internet, a museum, a school, a library, a hospital, a lab, and a market or an urban eating joint, eventually or virtually a space. The field becomes the ready-made laboratory for the research work. Field work is investigation in anthropology where the researcher stays in or visits the places of investigation for long periods of time not less than a year, receives first-hand experience and then collects data. Powder Maker defines field work as the study of people and of their culture in their natural habitat. Anthropological field work has been characterized by the prolonged residence of the investigator, his participation and observation of the society and his attempt to understand the inside view of the people, the natives, that the lives with. Others like Lohrmann point out that anthropology is the naturalist trait. You sit and watch and learn from the species in their natural environment. The next figure represents the anthropologist and the other, the other that we study. In the next figure, you will see the fieldwork definition. Fieldwork is equally important to both sociocultural anthropologists as well as the physical anthropologists and the archaeological anthropologists. It is one methodology they follow in their distinct branches throughout their academic lifetime due to the remarkable awareness that it provides. Anthropologists depend on the fieldwork as their ultimate source of gathering valid data. It is because, as Srivastava puts it, compared to other methods, fieldwork yields a lot of data from the lifestyle of people and the meaning they attribute to their actions. Fieldwork also teaches the distinction between what people think, what people say, what people do, and what people say they ought to have done. The next photograph depicts the fieldwork. Fieldwork is a kind of characteristic custom a procedure that assists anthropologists in the inquiry of human life. It offers a huge level of flexibility to the field worker as she or he can modify approaches and techniques of investigation and collection of data, create and add newer processes and formulate on-the-spot strategies to come 
to the grip with unforeseen challenges of the fieldwork. With this brief description on what fieldwork is, the module now proceeds with a concise history of the fieldwork in anthropology. Let's understand the history of fieldwork in anthropology. Anthropology today may hold a strong position in fieldwork expertise, but this was not always the case. When anthropologists began and when the discipline began as a valid field of study, its precursors through were very interested in knowing about how people lived all over the world. They were, however, not very keen to go out and investigate on their own. These European scholars of the 19th century rather preferred to be dependent on the inquiry made by the other missionaries, voyagers, traders and administrators who were basic, based locally in their places of interest, mostly colonies. Such scholars were generally known as armchair anthropologists. Edward Bernard Tyler, also known as E.B. Tyler, and one of his first generation anthropologists who probably gave the most famous definition of culture and an advocate of theory of human development, also known as evolutionism. They did assist an amateur archaeologist in his field expedition to Mexico in the mid-1850s. His first book, The Anahawk or Mexico and the Mexicans, Ancient and Modern, published in 1861, was purely based on their fieldwork. However, his latter and more famous works were authored through knowledge gathered from secondary sources, thus placing him on the category of armchair anthropologist. Another of his contemporaries, the Tylers, and also a promoter of evolutionism, the American scholar L. H. Morgan, known for his study on family, marriage and kinship, conducted his first fieldwork among the Iroquois a Native American tribe in 1840s. He published his findings in the form of book called The League of Iroquois. Unlike other armchair anthropologists of that time, he continued his field expeditions among many other North American tribes collecting data on their kinship systems. Though fieldworks as a fully fledged process of investigation in anthropology was not yet introduced in the discipline, Morgan is an influential in promoting the development and use of genealogical method during fieldwork while studying kinship, family and marriage. The photo shows Lewis Henry Morgan and Morgan's book on the Iroquois. The next photo shows the tourist expedition led by Rivers and Hayden. There was more fieldwork conducted by both the British and the Americans during the late 19th century. British stalwarts W. H. Rivers and A. C. Hayden organized the famous expedition to the Torres Straits in the Pacific in Australia in 1898. And then there was Franz Boas, the revered American anthropologist. He did his first fieldwork among the Eskimos in Baffin Islands, Canada in 1883. Rivers focused on the understanding of kinship related and by the time he studied the Todas of the Southern India, anthropologists had realized one thing, the importance of visiting and directly gathering knowledge of the societies they were interested in and rather than theorizing from their homes. Photo seen here is for Boas with an inhabitant of Baffin Island. Photo next photo shows Malinowski with a few Trobriander men. Boas popularly is known as the father of American anthropology and he strongly denounced the half-baked generalizations propagated by early 19th century anthropologists based on their scanty data made available through others. For Boas to theorize, one had to be dependent on proper ethnographic data collected by the first-hand basis. Boas vehemently believed that all fields of anthropology had to be investigated in order to procure accurate data and to provide a viewpoint. This thought of his permitted him to reconstruct the history of the growth of ideas with much greater accuracy than the generalizations of a comparative method. Boas thus introduced new ways of doing fieldwork in anthropology where he emphasized on ethnographic fieldwork, cultural relativism and participant observation method. 
Now, his cultural relativism brought in new sides to the study of anthropology. As the emphasis shifted from the reasoning of the investigating anthropologist to the perception and interpretation of the respondent of the culture that was being investigated. This was to do away with objective notions of one society being claimed over superior than the another, or more better or correcter than the other. The figure depicts Kula Ring Map as it shows with the Malinowski's famous book that it was taken from. This historical narrative would not be complete without mentioning the significant contribution of Bronislaw Malinowski. He was a Polish anthropologist to the fieldwork and the development of British social anthropology. He pioneered it. Malinowski changed the way fieldwork was conducted in anthropological investigation. His published works based on his experiences with the Trobriander Island of pa Papua New Guinea enlightened the anthropological fraternity and others on how culture, society and its people were to be researched coherently. He mainly stressed on the following while doing his fieldwork. An intensive ethnographic fieldwork, participant observation and communicating in the local language. The first two are similar to what Boaz had proposed, with slight variance in them. Malinowski pointed out the importance of building rapport, staying for a long period of time, for about an year or two, and getting to know the society being studied as convincingly as possible. To guide in this participant observation, denoting the involvement of an investigator in day-to-day -day events and dealing is a must. Both staying with the respondents and taking part in everyday happenings would require the investigator to build a certain level of comfort and trust among the respondents and the hosts. This can be created by communicating in the local language will Malinowski believe to be of immense assistance. Malinowski elaborates this description of the practice of cola ring in the celebrated Arugnauts with of the Western Pacific but that he published in 1922 with use of his prescribed fieldwork method still remains the hallmark of the ethnographic investigation. The next photo shows Alice Clues Parson and the next one with Margaret Mead and the Samoan girls. Women's entry into anthropology's fieldwork once a male-dominated space happened before the World War I with Alice Clues Parson one of the few women of her time who did fieldwork in the American Southwest in 1910. It was gradually held that women have access to women respondent lives, a point which was advocated with, by E.B. Tyler in the 19th century itself, who suggested that wives should assist their husbands for fieldwork to assist in such areas. Boas too advocated this sentiment as he believed that women had access to areas of social life that men did not have. He considered women more intuitive and skilled in inter -relation, interpersonal relationships and urged them to collect data on the emotional expressive sides of life. It was no surprise that the Boas students Ruth Benedict, Margaret Mead, Cora de Boer, were women who did their fieldwork in 1920s and 30s and had, became, had become the most leading anthropologists of their time. In the late 1940s, women like Mary Douglas came to the forefront doing her fieldwork in the Congo and became famous for her works on ritual purity and impurity and symbolism. These women, through their research, also brought in the notions of feminism and sexuality in their work and gave a much-needed twist to the anthropology. That was practiced at that time. These advances in the history of anthropology set the ground for serious fieldworks methodology and establishment anthropology into the legitimate field science. This concise historical account now leads us to understand how fieldwork as a tradition in anthropology exists. By now we have gathered quite a bit of knowledge on the importance of fieldwork and its history. Its history is so strong that it has become imperative to go to the field, live with the people under the study and take part of in their everyday life while collecting data. This 
has become part and parcel in the training of an anthropologist. The next figure shows the fieldwork tradition in anthropology. The practice of fieldwork is an undeniable aspect of anthropology to understand and benefit human beings. But how do we go about conducting fieldwork in reality? In the discussion on fieldwork history, we mentioned certain methods introduced by or used by esteemed anthropologists. In fieldwork, a set methodology, methods, techniques and tools are used to assist the investigator in or his, in his or her inquiry. These field methods are anthropology's fundamental source of data. Field methods are followed in all the four branches of anthropology. Physical or biological anthropology, social or cultural anthropology, archaeological anthropology and linguistic anthropology. In biological anthropology, the field methods are used and linked with the laboratory work to know in detail about human beings biologically. The field allows researchers to know about human beings' evolution, place in the animal kingdom, physiology, anatomy, relationship with other species, adaptation to nature, so on and so forth. Biological anthropology takes into account with the help of surveys, blood, hair, urine, other samples, anthropometric observations and also by observation of primates to study humans better. To understand human beings' past, archaeological anthropology study ma studies material culture and stratigraphy. Archaeologists in the field collect information on the past human ways of life through landscape surveys, sampling, studying artifacts and remains of body throughout excavations. In linguistic anthropology, anthropologists resort to the participant observation interviewing, interviewing recording of sounds and speeches in the field of understanding to uh, the significance of language, physical or symbolic in influencing the biological, social and cultural lives of the community that they are part of. To conduct fieldwork, convincing a linguistic anthropologist must be trained and, in, and adept in the language he or she is pursuing the study in. Social anthropology uses methods like participant observation, interviews, questionnaires, focus group discussions, case studies, life histories, etc. to comprehend living human beings along with their socio-cultural institutions and beliefs and practices. What they create is called ethnography. Depending on the kind of investigation, fieldwork may be influenced by various scenarios. Method to be used in the field will depend on the topic of research, the type of research, the kind of research, the place you want to research and all the available facilities. The two major ways anthropologists adapt to collect data are quantitative data and qualitative data. These methods may be used together or separately depending on the needs of the research. Now, What is quantitative data? Data that includes census, surveys, reports, archives, population studies, mapping and also using statistical methods to analyze collected information. It is mostly utilized by biological anthropologists through, though it's an adequately used by experts from other branches of anthropology as well. Though social anthropologists too make use of the quantitative data col method collection, their main concentration is on the qualitative data collection method. The most prominent method here, though frequently debated, is the participant observation method. The Malinowskian tradition of observation allows an anthropologist in the field to observe social life in its all complexities in variant and comprehensive ways. This participation in the everyday performances, be it mundane or formal ritualistic ones, the anthropologist gets an opportunity to enter the lives of the community studied and build rapport with informants or the respondents, which works as the opening to the process of field study. Once rapport is established, participant observation continues for further understanding of the lives of the research and it's supplemented with necessary methods and techniques to assist the research investigation. This figure shows the methods of data collection. Fieldwork investigation consists of what we may call general and specific processes. Once the fieldwork, 
worker identifies the unit that is the people and the universe that is the geographical or the cultural area, these two processes are concent concentrated on. The general processes assist in introducing the specific process of investigation. Establishing familiarity with the community members, keeping notes in the form of field diary of everyday occurrences, making efforts to learn the local language, the local words, conversing about general topics, photographing, etc. are general means by which the researcher may, with time, get an entry into the field and the lives of the people. Though these things though sound easy, sometimes the investigation initial entry into the field may be obstructed by various identities the investigator may process. For example, you being of a certain age, certain gender, a certain ethnicity, class, caste, religion may sometimes negatively affect the community to be investigated. Therefore, the process of entry in such situations may be even lengthier and gruesome than imagined. However, the investigator must not lose heart and must continue to make endeavors to find bring the community to trust him or her. Another initial task that the field worker may introduce is the collection of census. This will allow entry into every household and give the respondents an opportunity to assess each and evaluate the researcher as well. Now sooner or later few friendships will develop with certain people who may assist further in getting the researcher to access into more people's life, facilitating their incoming, enabling the investigation. Now, field work has now has been depicted in the next figure with the few steps. Once the general processes are concluded, the researcher may now make an attempt to introduce the specific processes. This would be, of course, you know, it can mean that he or she uh, should now gather knowledge of the various institutions available in the community and see how his or her topic of research may be taken forward. The literature review which the researcher should do before landing onto the field will help in designing and managing this interview guide along with the initial data collection based on the census and the social institutions. The interview, interviews may be basic questions to begin with and like once the respondent becomes comfortable with the researcher, they may be converted to precise ones dealing with the topic of research in hand. This can then lead to other ways of data collection like case studies, life histories and the like. Throughout all these, the researcher must always be respectful about the ways of life and the community and should never do anything to malign the trust that has been built. The researcher should always be ready for the unexpected in the field and through a field guide is necessary to assist him or her on the field. One has to be alert enough to make beneficial decisions for oneself on the field as well, which would not affect the field of all the people adversely. Field work is guided by various theories from the old ones to the new ones depending on the kind of study that's being formulated. These stories, these theories help in supervising the researcher to reach his or her goal of the topic or theme attempted to be studied. These theories may be tested with the use of hypothesis if need be. It is often a mix of pragmatic and philosophical ideas. In qualitative research especially, social reality is studied from various perspectives. However, anthropology in its earlier days was highly influenced by the following of the positivist approach known as positivism. This approach is based on natural science and slowly promoted quantitative research with objectivity and distance from the respondents were the main components. This attempt was to create a scientific response to the investigation. But with time, following Franz Boas, the prominent anthropologists in 1970s and 1980s, like Clifford Geertz, George Marquis, and Paul Rabinow, denounced the objective analysis advocated by the likes of Malinowski and introduced subjective analysis with the emphasis on self-reflexivity. Such studies came to be called as interpretive and descriptive studies where the approach of research was from an emic viewpoint, meaning that the respondents of the culture's opinion was given importance rather than researchers' standpoint, 
which is known as the Etic Perspective. The figure displays the patterns of conducting ethnographic fieldwork along with fieldwork's intent. Anthropological research and fieldwork has come a long way from what it was in the beginning. However, the intent remains the same. Fieldwork assists in creating a learning of knowledge which may bring about an understanding of lives we live. Once data is collected, the, field, the findings are then analyzed and are reported or thesis is built in order to put forward the conclusions that were inferred. Though the above descriptions of the fieldwork sound intriguing and without any complications, yet it is not always the case. The most apparent concern that may be faced while doing fieldwork is the concern of the ethics. In the brief account below, how ethics concern a major effect in the fieldwork has been discussed. Researchers frequently face ethical dilemmas while conducting fieldwork. Barney's postulated that research has an ethical dimension whenever it impinges on the creatures with whom we have moral relations. Ethical issues can crop up the moment a researcher decides on a topic. The topic might be controversial for the people who are not to be studied and they may not have been given consent for the exploration of their space. Ethical predicaments may arise when there are disputes and tensions related to an opposite reaction to any situation which has to be with the researcher, respondents or the findings and its production. Figure 9 represents the ethics in fieldwork. It is the researcher who attempts to enter the place to investigate the people, to study, and while doing so, lives, relationship, equations are all placed under the risk of being known by him or her or by their world too. For the field worker, the intentions are only academic, intellectual, and professional thoughts to be offered to the world, but not for the population that is being studied. The impact of such activities may be high. Ethics and ethical solutions hence need to be brought in while conducting fieldwork. Ethics need to be viewed subjectively as not only it is difficult to identify ethical norms, but it is equally difficult to employ them as different situations may bring out different ethical problems. A framework to help resolve some basic ethical issues is to be noted. The first thing that you need to keep in mind is confidentiality. The researcher as the taker of information from the field must be cautious of his or her position. He or she should not take the utmost care of his or her behavior in the field and also in the final representation of the report. The next thing that you need to know about is the consent. The researcher needs to take consent from the respondents before probing into their life. It is actually seen that if you take consent, the confidentiality uh, component of the study actually rises. The next thing that you need to understand is the utility. Most of the times, the respondents pour out information expansively without expecting anything in return from the researcher. It becomes the moral, it becomes the moral responsibility of the researcher to utilize this information in a way which is productive to his or her work and at the same time, if possible, to be accessible and beneficial to the respondent community. The aid and the help of the community's better men should always be thought about by the researcher. You also need to understand that knowledge and its transmission has to be taken care of while you're designing a study. Once the findings are analyzed and produced in the form of a thesis, book, research, paper or a report, it signifies the dissemination of knowledge. How this is done is an important ethical concern. These are some fundamental challenges to be kept in mind by the researcher in terms of moral responsibility while in the field. Let's understand how fieldwork has changed over time and how does it look today. Today, anthropological fieldwork has come a long way in terms of the kind of investigation conducted. The areas of research have become manifold. With their transformations taking place in the globalized world, we find that along with the conventional areas of fieldwork, the spaces where research and fieldwork are done have evolved over time. Fieldwork is no longer only conducted in remote populations but also in the urban settings and at times 
one's own native places either urban or rural. Topics of research are such today that the fieldwork may be conducted in government and legal spaces to know about policies and laws and also assist government bodies in the formulation of new ones. We here showed the fieldwork as it happens today. Fieldwork is also done in communities only so that reformation in their structure may be brought about with the help of government and civil bodies. Anthropological fieldwork now not only concentrates on environmental changes and how they affect human lives, but also at the same time researches, researches media and how it influences the way humans act in their social life. The internet on the new media has also become a much sought after area of investigation as it is too seen as a space exhibiting culture, a space which allows social interaction of the virtual kind. Internet research or virtual ethnography as it is commonly called is a challenging space as it offers mixed practices, meanings and identities where what is real or surreal is hard to decipher. Context may have evolved to give way to very novel ways of doing fieldwork, but its essence remains the same. The purpose of fieldwork that anthropology advocates remains unchanged, and it is this unique way of knowing and learning that is the hallmark of the anthropology, anthropology that is also known as the field science. Thank you.